on this Good Friday. We have come together as a community for this liturgy of the word with communion service. This is the singular day throughout the year, throughout the liturgical year, when we do not celebrate the Eucharist or we do not have the Mass. The priest will not consecrate because he cannot. We will have to wait for the Easter celebrations in the liturgy to be able to do that. So you will not also wonder why there is also no blessing. Because everything flows from the sacrifice of the Lord that we commemorate today on this day. Earlier during the introduction, it was read that the cause of the death of Jesus is sin. And that is correct. Our sins. But the readings today would allow us to identify that sin. What kind of sin? And I would like to say that it is ambition. Human ambition. It is not bad to have ambitions. In fact, we teach our young, our children, to have ambitions. We don't like kids who don't have any ambition in life. The wrong kind of ambition has a lot of pride in it. That becomes the bad human ambition. And every time we put that kind of human ambition on our agenda, someone is born. One of the characters in the gospel that we have read today, a very powerful character is born, not Jesus. I don't know who will be your guest. Who was the most powerful voice? In the reading, it is Pilate. Every time we put human ambition on top agenda, Pilate is born. If we really read, reflect, and look at the way the gospel is written today, you will ask a very strong question. Especially the lawyers who are here. You will ask, what was the charge? Here's somebody condemned. Here's somebody brought to trial and even crucified. But what was the charge? What was wrong? Pilate himself repeatedly said it. I find no fault in this man. So, there was no charge. Another of the questions that maybe perhaps this would lead us to some answers about what is the cause of the death of Jesus is the same person, Pilate. Suddenly he asked Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? There is the clue. In fact, Jesus intimated it in his response. Where did you get that? That was the question of Jesus. Where did you get that? Who told you that? Who testified to you very strongly that now you, who are supposed to try me, you are now taking the role of the accuser? 
So Pilate now has a second role. First, he will be he will be the one to hear Jesus, to hear the case. Now, he's the one accusing. Second role. Why did Pilate pose that question? People who are very ambitious fear something. And what is that fear? The fear that somebody will get into my position someday. So I should not allow that. I should not allow my competitor. Maybe the future governor. Maybe the future king. In this case, king. It was repeated and repeated. One famous philosopher, Friedrich Nietzsche, when he read this story, when he read the question and answer between Pilate and Jesus, realized that there is only one God in the world. According to this philosopher, Nietzsche. And he says that God is selfish power. That is God. Nietzsche became insane. He could not appreciate the powerlessness of Jesus. What he did appreciate was the power of Pilate, the selfish power of Pilate. And for him, he is the most powerful figure. Selfish, yes. So that is why if we really look at this story, we see how dangerous Pilate is. And we see how dangerous our human ambition is. Maybe you will ask, where was Pilate from? Where was he born? He's a human being like us. But now if you look through history, we have already forgotten where he was born. Some say Spain. Some say Scotland. Sorry for these nations. Some say Germany. Some say Italy. The place where he was born, the nation, is not important. He is born wherever people refuse to recognize the truth when they see it. Pilate is born when we don't like to hear the truth. And when that happens, persons destroy one another. We become people ready to fight one another, to go to war with one another, to destroy other persons. Some of you might remember an old song. It's entitled, People. People who need people are the luckiest people in the world. But in that case, Pilate does not need anybody. Here is this person who does not need anyone. We may say, he is the unluckiest of people in the world. I'm talking about Pilate to really underline how much human power can destroy human beings. What happened to Pilate? He became very vindictive 
and later on he was removed from his position by Lucius Vitellius, the governor of Syria. He was exiled. Some say he committed suicide. In other renditions, he became insane. Just like the philosopher I was referring to earlier, that was what happened to Pilate. No one actually remembers when or where. When human beings become so bloated up with themselves, that's the exact formula to be forgotten. Maybe when Pilate was in exile, he was roaming around. Maybe he heard the voice of Jesus. Maybe he would recall the disciples lecturing. The just will go to eternal life. That is the kingdom of Jesus. But those who are ambitious, the unjust, the sinners, to eternal punishment. My dear brothers and sisters, on this day, when we gather to commemorate the death of the Lord, we are asked by the Lord to choose life. After all, the only choice in life is either between holiness or madness. Choose. Do you want to be holy? Or do you want to be mad? As we commemorate the death of Jesus, may we choose life. May we live in the holy way of life He taught us.